network analysis is is kind of really well, uh, really useful kind of analysis uh, approach where we use these kind of graphs uh, that we, for example, fetch now from OpenStreetMap. So road network is is one kind of graph that we can start analyzing. Uh, other kind of graphs that can be analyzed is, for example, social networks. So, for example, well, that that can be retrieved from social media, for example. But also, if kind of how they have been traditionally analyzed is that if you make a list of all your friends, and for example, the whole classroom here is making a list of our friends. So, using that information, we can actually uh, create some uh, this kind of social network graph uh, but in uh, transportation modeling uh, networks are typically streets for example uh, and we use those streets and the kind of attributes that are associated to those streets such as speed limits lengths and so on to for example uh, make routes calculate the most optimal routes uh, and I guess many of you are using these kind of routing applications uh, quite often if you have a car and you use the navigator that is kind of a typical example how these kind of routing algorithms are used to kind of do wayfinding. Uh, so what is the most optimal route from A to B using car for example but also using public transport which these journey planners uh, are for example a good examples of so indeed this network x uh, package uh, so this one this has a lot of different functionalities to analyze networks from different perspectives not not only from kind of transportation perspective but also from uh, for example, for, from social uh, social perspective, so understanding the uh, uh, social networks and their structure and, and so on. So there is a lot of kind of uh, good information available on the website of, of Network X uh, as well. Uh, we will we will see how we can do some transportation routing. Uh, in this case, so we will see how we can find the closest or the most optimal route from A to B using some kind of impedance uh, or cost value, basically, which is in our case now uh, a simple one. So the length of the of the road. Uh, how many of you have used network analysis tools, for example, in ArcGIS or some other? Okay, a few, but not not that much. Uh, is the net kind of the idea still more or less clear? Uh, it, how many of you uh, know about Dijkstra's algorithm? One. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so a bit of now. Let's go to our trusted friend. Wikipedia. So the idea in the uh, network analysis uh, and, and especially now in this Dijkstra's algorithm is that we have some kind of uh, location uh, and this is kind of the network first of all that we have. So these are the nodes uh, on our networks. These could be for example streets uh, and, and, and the nodes in the sections. So these are the nodes and these are the edges between connecting these nodes to each other. And then the idea in the network analysis is that we give some kind of costs uh, for these uh, edges. So how much cost uh, does it take to reach from this location to here? Uh, and the cost can be anything. It can be, it can be the length of the street, for example, but most often of for example, what we do on our research is that we use time as an impedance value, so as a cost in here. So this could be like uh, 
getting from here to here takes nine minutes, but from here to here it takes 14 minutes and so on. And then what uh, Dijkstra's algorithm does is that it will basically go through uh, the network. So it will kind of try to find a route from here uh, to here, for example, uh, and it will kind of travel uh, across the network and take uh, and calculate uh, the, the total cost of taking different routes. And then it will basically just, uh, if you're looking for getting the uh, kind of the most optimal route, it will, uh, it will choose that kind of route where the cost, total cost is the minimum. Uh, of course, you might be interested in the maximum cost or median or, or whatever, but the optimal uh, route finding uh, algorithms such as Dijkstra are kind of trying to find the most optimal one. Uh, and as you can understand, maybe that Dijkstra is indeed always going through the whole network. So even though you have, uh, for example, uh, the origin in here and the destination in here, and this is now really small graph, so we only have six nodes in here, but thinking of the graph of whole Helsinki, for example. So if we are using Dijkstra, it is actually going through the whole Helsinki region network to find the most optimal route. So this is kind of a quite heavy uh, and, and kind of not so cost uh, efficient algorithm, but it always will find the kind of exact uh, correct uh, the optimal route. But then there are other uh, other algorithms such as this A star algorithm that is kind of a different approach. So it doesn't go through all the the whole network. It kind of makes guesses and, and kind of do things a bit more efficiently. But then the the result is that it it doesn't know hundred percent sure if that route that it has found is the most optimal one. So there is kind of a difference in these, these two approaches in here. Good. Uh, that was a really quick uh, intro into kind of network analysis. And the Dijkstra indeed, it was published in 1956. So this is a really old, old algorithm uh, or, already, and it's still quite a lot used. There are much more efficient algorithms nowadays. Uh, indeed, uh, kind of targeted to make, for example, uh, continent-wide routings. And if you would use this approach to analyze the whole street network of whole Europe, you will use years to actually go <laughs> go through that. Of course, the computers are nowadays faster. But anyway, the idea is that there are two large graphs that uh, can could be used, uh, go, went through with this approach. Good. Um, but let's start with uh, seeing how we can use the OSMNX package and the network X uh, package to, to do some uh, routing network analysis. So what we will do is that we will uh, retrieve the data from the same region. Uh, so using the comp, so we are now having a really small network, but it doesn't matter. It, it kind of introduces us to the uh, basic principles of how we can do the, the routing. So we will again import OSMNX as OX. Uh, now we will also import network X as NX. I actually hope that it's installed in here. It should be, yes. Network X as index. Then we will import GeoPandas as GBD. Uh, also matplotlib. Pyplot as PLT, and let's also import pandas. I'm not sure why, but it might be that I have some things coming from there as well. But uh, the first step, 
what we do again is to repeat the same thing that we did in previous tutorial. So we will uh, search uh, streets from area of interest. So the place name for us is again the same. Kompi Helsinki Finland. And we will fetch the graph by using the ox oops, ox dot graph from place. And we will say that the place name is the one that we are interested in fetching. Uh, but now, when we are doing the routing, uh, basically if we wouldn't specify uh, any criteria what kind of roads we would be fetching so then we would have all different kind of streets in our network we would have the walkable paths for example and the uh, uh, roads that can be driven by car uh, so we want to actually limit our search in a way that we all only get uh, such roads that are drivable with car and there is a parameter called network type in this uh, OSMNX graph from place that we can specify that take only drivable uh, edges from, from this area. So network type dot drive is, is a way how we can do that. Uh, if I check the documentation from here da, da, da. do we have yeah i need to so if i go all smnx github so <clears throat> this is the kind of web page the GitHub page for this OSMNX package that actually demonstrates a lot more uh, of the capabilities uh, of, of what can be done. But there should be... Let's see... No. There is an example repo in here. Let's take a look at this one. Drive. Oh. Well. Here, yeah, uh, I'm sure there is a better source of information somewhere but this is now the source code so <clears throat> what kind of network types uh, you can add there uh, is that you can basically specify that fetch only uh, rows that are walkable uh, that can be uh, driven or well uh, taking taking my bike uh, drive uh, this drive service is basically including drivable rows and some service roads that are maybe not uh, used used typically uh, this all is basically the, the default so you will it will fetch everything uh, all private roads and, and so on so these attributes can be used to kind of limit limit the search uh, of what kind of network is fetched from here so what we will basically use uh, the drive one, so fetch only roads that are 
drivable by car, let's also plot plot the graph so we can see what we have. So fig and x equals to ox dot plot dot graph. And now it takes a few seconds to fetch the data. And now we can see that we have this kind of network. So if we compare this to the earlier one, so this is how the streets looked like if we didn't limit them at all. So we can see that we have a lot of actually different roads uh, in this network. In here we have, for example, this seems to be, um, I don't know, some part, but anyway, these are kind of food paths uh, in this area. But when we compare it to this one, we can see that it's much more, uh, there is much less different streets. And these are basically the streets that can be driven by car. So that's basically how we can use the network type uh, in here. So let's fetch the edges from the data. So let's again, So there might be situations where you actually uh, want to retrieve, you are not interested in the nodes of the graph, but you are interested in only on the edges, so kind of the, the streets. So we had this ox.graph to gdfs function. So if you do this, you will basically retrieve the nodes and edges as well. But you can also specify that I'm not interested in the nodes. So I can say that nodes equals to false and the edges equals to true. So there are a couple of uh, parameters that you can specify what kind of data you want to retrieve from, from the graph that you have fetched. And let's print the edges dot columns in here. So now we indeed have the edges and as we can see we have these parameters in here. Uh, and there is a basically uh, this table in here describing what these different columns uh, represent <laughs> and what, what is their data type. So for example in uh, there is this column called bridge that is uh, an attribute uh, used to specify if certain segment is a bridge or not. So it is true or false basically in that case. Then we have the geometry of course. Uh, then we have the tag for roads as I explained. So we have the highway uh, that can be, let's take a look of, of the different possibilities, but it can be a string uh, or it can be a list of strings. So you might have a longer uh, street element that might be actually of two different types of, uh, of, of, of rows. So then you might end up having a list of, of attributes. So here we have all the different uh, keys for, for this highway. So we have motorway, we have trunk, primary road, secondary roads, tertiary roads. So we can see that these are kind of uh, road classes in a way. Uh, then we have some residential ones, service roads, and then we have different kind of links such as uh, slip roads, uh, ramps. Uh, so these these are connecting two different roads to, together, such as what we can see see from here, uh, and living streets and, and such. So basically, this highway tag is really uh, kind of useful. Uh, and then we have the number of lanes, length, max speed, uh, and so on. And then we have these uh, kind of uh, attributes. Well, the OSM ID is also important because that is the ID for a specific element, uh, how it has been defined in OpenStreetMap. So it is kind of a unique, it can be uh, a single ID or a list of IDs in a similar manner as 
few of these other ones. Then we have this Q and V, that is basically if we have an edge, so this U is the first node of a specific edge or link, and the V is the last node. So we can the, the road starts from here and ends from here. So these are kind of those those locations. Good. Um, let's see what is the edges.crs. So what is the coordinate reference system that comes by default from here is that it comes in the WGS84 projection. Uh, so the coordinates are latitudes and longitudes basically in here. Um, actually, we can take a look what is the... So we have the edges and then we have the highway column in there. So there is this function in pandas, in geopandas, uh, called value counts, which is quite useful in a way that with this function, so edges and the column name inside the square brackets dot value counts, you can actually uh, see uh, what kind of, like, what is the distribution of your data uh, into these different highway tags. So we can see directly from here that there is 112 uh, street elements, so edges in this area that have been assigned with tag residential. So there is quite a bit of residential roads in the area. Then there is tertiary, uh, so kind of third level uh, data. Then there are primary, so kind of first uh, level uh, streets, if we think that uh, there are these different road classes and so on, and, and some living streets as well. So this, I don't know if you have used, but this can be quite handy handy uh, function to use. But, uh, yeah, and the point of actually taking a look at this is that we can see that because we use the network type is equals to drive, we can see that there are no uh, cycleways, for example, or footways included in, in this data. Uh, let's see now how we can actually uh, reproject the data. So this is now the uh, graph was in WGS84, uh, but let's see how we can actually uh, um, distribute or reproject the data into uh, this kind of metric system. So using this UTM uh, format. So reprojecting data into UTM. So let's create a variable called graph underscore proy, which is projected. And there is a function in OSMNX called OX dot project graph. And what this takes as an input again is the, the graph like this. And there is this two CRS, so you can specify what uh, kind of uh, coordinate reference system you want to uh, reproject the data into. But basically, if you don't specify anything, it will uh, use the UTM, so Universe Transverse Mercator. Uh, so it will use by default this universal transfer mercator coordinate reference system. That is kind of a metric uh, projection uh, on different, uh, there are kind of, uh, how do you call these? Uh, yeah, there is this UTM grid uh, that covers the whole world uh, in a way. So OSMNX basically, uh, automatically understand that from in which part of the grid you are located and it will uh, reproject your data into that one. So uh, specifying this we can do the 
projection and let's plot it as well. So ox dot plot graph graph right. So so now we can see well we are now having so small area that we don't maybe see any difference compared to the earlier one uh, at least visually but if we take a look of how the values actually look in the data so get nodes and edges so if we take nodes underscore proy and edges underscore proy equals to ox dot graph to gdfs and print no notes proy dot head uh, so now what I did was that I took the or converted the graph into geodata frames having both of the nodes and the edges and now when we take a look of the nodes geodata frame so we can see that these were the original values so latitude and longitude are this uh, in, in here but these are the new geometries in here so these are just numerical variables in here but we can see that the points are in metric system at the moment Good. Uh, and let's take a look of what is actually the CRS of this one. So indeed we can see that the coordinate reference system is now in the uh, zone 35, uh, which is the UTN zone for, for Finland. And the units are meters in this case. So that's what we have. Okay let's take a look so now we have fetched uh, the graph uh, but let's see what how we can actually analyze a bit what kind of network properties we have so there is a lot of methods to do network analysis uh, let's take a look so So if basically taking a look at the network theory, uh, graph theory is also kind of a, another word used or term used for that. So there is a lot of different ways and different fields where the network analysis is used. And there is a quite a bit of uh, examples uh, what how it can be analyzed these centrality measures is, is one of kind of uh, way how we can look at the networks. So try to understand with different measures, uh, for example, see what is the most central uh, node like in the section or location in the network. So we can kind of start to understand these kind of things. Uh, and, and lots of different things. So what we will see now is that there is quite nice uh, function available in OSM and X called basic stats that basically uh, gives you a lot of statistics about the street network that you have. So let's see how we can calculate network statistic. So ox dot basic stats craft proy. So we now put the projected statistics in here and let's then call that. So what we get as an output is this kind of list of uh, different statistics that we get directly using this uh, basic stats uh, function from OSM index. We can, for example, right away see that 
how many intersections we have in this graph. There seems to be 116 of those. Uh, and then how many segments there are, 183. Uh, then there is a lot of these kind of street density per kilometer, for example. We have none uh, because if we want to calculate these density uh, measures, we actually need to specify the area, uh, how, what we are kind of compared to what. Uh, so we need to specify the, the area uh, to do these density things. So let's do next uh, a trick that we basically pass in for this basic stats function the area of, of our uh, the kind of extent of our graph so that we can understand that and we will calculate basically the area based on convex hull of the street network and if you're not familiar what the convex hull is is basically kind of the if we if you have the nodes and the street network so it tries to kind of find the minimum area so like this, so the minimum area of, uh, of this uh, extent of that graph that we have. So let's get the convex hull of the network. So we use the projected edges, so edges pro and we can use this unary union this has been i think uh, introduced earlier but from this unary uni union we can actually get the convex hull out and let's see how does that look like when we do this so what we can see that okay now we indeed have kind of the extent uh, of the whole whole network using the convex hull method. So now what we want to do is that we want to calculate the area of this one. Uh, and why we did the reprojection was that now when we calculate the area, we have the area in meters instead of decimal degrees. So let's calculate the area. So area equals to this convex hull that we created dot area and now we can calculate statistics uh, with more extensive measures so calculate statistics so we start by calculating the basic statistics so stats equals to ox dot basic stats so the one that we did before uh, and we use the craft proy as an input. And then we use the uh, parameter called area. Uh, so basically what this contains, this area is a number, uh, basically representing how many square meters this area in here is. And then we can uh, calculate extended statistics. So there is kind of extended stats. So we can use ox dot extended stats. And inside here, we put the graph again. And then there are a couple of parameters. Uh, a ECC true, BC equals to true, and CC equals to true. So I don't know even remember what these parameters were, but they are basically kind of, you can limit what kind of statistics uh, are coming. Uh, and these will print out all of them. So let's add, so I will now, basically what this returns uh, is a dictionary. So let's add this dictionary into the extended um, or into the basic stats that we have. So extended stats dot items. So this is kind of in a similar manner 
uh, as we are iterating over the data frames. So now we are not iterating over the data frame, we are iterating over actually a dictionary. Uh, and this is how it can be done. Uh, and now what we are doing is that we append or add to these statistics uh, kind of the value of this one. Uh, let's take a look soon what I mean about these. So I will just execute this. So when I do this, so what now happened was that now we have a long list of all sorts of statistics about uh, the, the network. Uh, we have the centrality measures, for example, uh, such as between the centrality. There should be a link. Uh, so there, well, there is a lot of information here, but a few of the points in here. So we can, for example, see that what is the node density? So how many nodes in the network you have? So there seems to be 149 nodes per kilometer, uh, square kilometer in here. What is the total length? So we seem to have roads uh, for 19, almost 20 uh, kilometers in this small area. Uh, then we have the degree centrality. Uh, uh, what is one measure of centrality. So there are different ways to actually understand centrality of a network from different perspectives. Uh, and there is a kind of Wikipedia article giving a nice, uh, nice overview uh, of these things. I think there should be, yeah. So there is the closeness centrality, but we have between us. And, uh, do we have the, yeah. yeah, so basically the decrease centrality measures the kind of how many neighbors a node has uh, in, in here, in the, in the network. Then there is a page rank uh, also included in here, which is here. So page rank, how many of you have heard about page rank one? Uh, page rank is basically an algorithm developed by Google. So how the Google works is that it actually uses this page rank. I don't know how they nowadays do, but that was the original thing. So they use the page rank algorithm to understand the central uh, kind of the most visited sites, basically, and then they can understand uh, how how much different pages are used. Uh, and then, for example, in Google searches, so the, the sites that are more visited gets more visibility uh, in the order of, of those uh, search results that you uh, you use or you use in or get from Google, but nowadays they of course use a lot of personalization and, and such, so uh, it might be quite complicated how they are actually nowadays doing that. But indeed, uh, so you can get a kind of a lots of information about, uh, about the network and for example, uh, based on the network, uh, the page rank algorithm, we can see that the uh, most important node uh, in the network is uh, it's basically a node with well it cannot be seen too well but uh, a node with this ID uh, of, of, of from the network good but yeah that was a quick uh, intro to to different network statistics but let's now finally do the kind of shortest path analysis what was the kind of main target of this tutorial so what we will do now is that we have the let's plot the uh, edges Draw it plot so we have this this network 
in here. So what we are doing is that we basically want to calculate the shortest path from the centroid of this area to the most eastern part. It can be whatever, but this is kind of uh, one, one way of uh, defining the origin and destination. So whenever we are doing uh, routing uh, using, for example, road networks such as this, so we want to pass in information about, okay, from where do we actually want to travel to where? So we want to specify the origin and the destination. And now the origin that we will specify is just the centroid of this area and the destination is the most eastern part of this region for whatever purpose. This is not just to uh, kind of demonstrate how we can do this. So basically we want to search uh, the route to this location here, which is the most eastern node uh, in, this, in this network. So, uh, let's see how we can do that. So, indeed, we have the convex hull that we calculated earlier. So, it is this one that basically represents the geometry uh, of, of the convex hull of the area of interest. So, we can use that as our centroid. So, let's calculate the centroid based on that. So, we have centroid equals to convex hull that we calculated earlier and we take the centroid of that area and we can see that when doing this we have a point location such as this in, in the uh, as, as a result. Uh, then what we want to use uh, as our destination. So this is now the origin point. So the destination point will be the most eastern uh, node uh, in, in our network. So how we can do that uh, is that we can basically take advantage of the X coordinates of our graph to actually, or, or the nodes to understand what the edge of uh, the most eastern part is. So the uh, node with the highest value in the x coordinate. If, of course, when we think about x coordinates, so the more eastern we go, the bigger the number gets. So we will get the uh, kind of maximum uh, x coordinate of the nodes. So we have the nodes pro in here. So basically, these are now the uh, coordinates. There is actually X and Y. Uh, yeah, there is X and Y already here, but as we can see, this doesn't contain uh, the decimal values. So what we want to have is actually to have this kind of value uh, as, as a result. So what we will do is that we will calculate this node proy x equals to node proy dot x. So this is taking the x coordinate and we will convert that to float so that we will get the actual coordinates as a, as a value. This is now just an approximation what we have in here. So Let's see what happens when we do this. So as we can see, what we did now was that we updated this X column in here. And now we have the actual X value having the full decimal uh, accuracy in, in here. So now what we want to do is that we want to find out what is the maximum X value in here. So we can call max x equals to nodes proy and the x column in here and just using the same different uh, typical functions to dot max to find out what is the max x and we can see that the most eastern node 
in this nodes pro it seems to be uh, having this kind of coordinate in here. So now what we want to do is that we want to fetch uh, that row from the geodata frame where the x value equals to this one. And that will be our destination. So let's retrieve the node uh, that is the most eastern one. So we will see that the target in our analysis is the one from the nodes pro geodata frame and we use the lock uh, indexer in here and from where do we take the selection is again from this nodes pro where the x value is the same as the maximum x that we had in here and we are interested only in the geometry of that one because when we pass in the information to the routing algorithm, we want to have the geometries in there. So let's see what we have in here. So now we can see that what we had was that now we have this point uh, from this geodata frame uh, this in this index. But actually what we want to have is that we want to extract this geometry here uh, as a shapely object because this is now kind of uh, in Panda series. So we want to take the values from here and take this one. So now when we do this and print the target, we can see that we have the actual point, which is a shapely point from, from here. So this is the trick uh, that we wanted to do. Then uh, there is a function in uh, OSMNX called get nearest node. So the idea of the uh, in the network analysis is that when we want to do the routing, so when we want to find out what is the shortest path, for example, from this node to, to here uh, or to here. Uh, so we want to know, so the centroid uh, in our area, it can be, for example, located in here. But when we want to do the uh, shortest path uh, wayfinding, we need to find out that what is the closest node to, to, for example, if this would be the location. So we need to uh, use a function from OSMNX to find out that which node from all of these that are close by is the closest one. And for example, if we would have the node in here, this would be uh, the closest node. Uh, and if we would be, for example, somewhere in here, this would be the closest node. So this is the idea. So we need to uh, find out the closest node in the network uh, next to the origin point that we have that can be located anywhere uh, and the same thing for the destination point that can be again located anywhere. So we will see now how we can actually find out those closest, uh, closest points. So now we have the target uh, point geometry uh, and then we have target and then we have the origin uh, geometry which is the centroid of this convex hull. So those we will use and, and find out the closest, uh, closest nodes. Uh, but first we need to uh, get the origin x and y coordinates so how this function works is that it wants to have a uh, x and y, or actually latitude and longitude coordinates, the, the function that we're going to use. So we will say that the origin x and y is a tuple where the centroid, the latitude of this centroid is the first value and the longitude. So centroid dot x uh, is the longitude. So lat long is this one. And we do the same thing uh, for the target. So x and y coordinates. 
So we say that target x and y equals to target dot y target dot x like this. And let's see what we have in here at this point. So now what we have, you can see that this is now for the origin x and y, but basically we have the coordinates in this kind of format. So there, there is this uh, kind of coordinate tuple that we have. So now we can use and find the closest, find the closest nodes from the network. So we create a variable called origin node, so oric node, uh, and that equals to ox dot get nearest node. So this is a function to find the uh, nearest node to specific uh, latitude and longitude point, as we can see from the documentation in here. So what this wants as an input is that from which graph are we actually taking the uh, finding the closest node. So in our case it's this graph underscore proy, so the projected graph. And what is the kind of starting point? So now we are looking for the origin uh, node. So we pass in the coordinate tuple from this auric x and y into here. And then we want to specify that uh, use the Euclidean uh, Euclidean distance as a measure. What is the kind of measure of distance uh, in this case? So this is how we can get the origin node. And let's see what we have. So now we use this function and what we get as an output is this kind of number. And what this number is, it's actually the index value of the node, nodes set that we have. So we will actually see, see that later. Um, I will introduce you more about that, but let's do the target node in a similar manner before I explain a bit more. So I now just copy paste this thing and change this to be target x and y. So now we should have a sim in a similar manner the target node and we see a different number. So now we have two numbers uh, the index or the id value for the origin node and the id value for the target node. So now what we can do uh, is that we can retrieve the actual data from of those nodes from the uh, nodes geoda geodata frame. So as you remember, we have two geodata frames. So we have one geodata frame for the edges having the links uh, and the roads, and the other one is the node, so all the intersections and such. So now we can retrieve uh, the rows from the nodes geodata frame. So we can see that the, the closest, the origin closest one is the node proy, which is the geodata frame that we had, dot lock. And we can just pass in the value from these ones inside this indexer, orig, orig node. And we can see what do we have in here when we do this. So now, as you can see, that we pass in the information about the ID value of this closest node that we have, so the origin node, and as a result, we get a one row from, from the geodata frame, uh, kind of disc having all the attributes of, of that, that node. We do the same thing for the target, so T closest equals to node proy dot lock and the target node is like this and then finally let's create a geodata frame out of these so create a geodata frame so let's call od nodes 
equals to gbd dot geo data frame and what from which we are creating this from is that we pass in the o the o closest and the t closest as the values in our geo data frame we specify that the geometry uh, comes from geometry column and the CRS is the same as in this uh, nodes proy dot CRS. So these are the parameters and as a result we should have a geodata frame with two rows. So now we can see that for example, on the second row, so the target there seems to be traffic signal, uh, traffic lights basically associated with that node, uh, and so on. Good, but now uh, let's see how we can actually do the uh, shortest path calculation. So we are going to use from network x this uh, algorithm, uh, the function called shortest path that uses by default uh, Dijkstra's algorithm to do the uh, optimizing the route uh, if a weight parameter is used. So let's see how we can do. So calculate the shortest path. So, we can create a route by using this nx. So this is the network x package that we uh, imported in the beginning. So network x, import network x as, well actually I can do it here. So import network x as nx. So this is the, the one that we used. So root equals to nx nx shortest path and this is a function that we can use to find the shortest path based on some graph that we pass in and from source to target using some weight so as you if you remember that, that these edges might have different cost attributes such as the length of the uh, of the edge or some other cost such as travel time and so on. So with this weight, we can actually specify that one. So the graph that we are going to use is this graph proy. Uh, the source, so from where the uh, calculation should be done on the routing, is the origin node. So the origin node, if you remember, is uh, actually this kind of number. So this is now an ID of the node uh, where we are actually starting the uh, starting the routing and the same thing goes for the uh, target which is the target node. So in a similar manner we specify uh, a number of the ID of that node where we are actually wanting to go. And as a weight, so what do we use as a cost parameter in here? So let's use the length of the of the road. So let's see where we have. So so if you remember that the edges geodata frame, uh, it has this. Uh, length uh, attribute having the length of the feature in meters so we can use that as our cost parameter to do the routing and it is defined as such and then this is all we need to do and we can print out the route and see what actually comes as an output so as you saw it just took some milliseconds to analyze and find out the uh, shortest path in this case. And what we get as an output is basically a list of nodes 
that basically represents the shortest path. So we start from this node that is the closest one to the uh, origin node in here, and then we end up to the last node, what is our destination. And basically, if we want to, of course, with these numbers, we don't do that much, but we want to uh, actually retrieve the data from the edge to actually see which route uh, was, the, was the closest one. Uh, there is a nice function in uh, OSMNX to easily plot the shortest path. So we can just say fig and x equals to ox dot plot graph root. And what this uh, function takes as an input is the graph on uh, like what is the graph where the shortest path is based on, then it wants to get the root, so actually get a list of these indices uh, that was the shortest path in the case. And we can also specify what is the origin point. So we can say that oric, oric xy was the origin point and what is the destination point. And that is the target x and y. And when doing this, we get a nice looking plot that shows that, okay, the centroid was somewhere in here. This seemed to be the closest node to, to our centroid. And then uh, the target point was the most eastern uh, node in our network which is this one here, as we can see. And then based on the distance, this seems to be the most optimal, optimal route uh, based on Dijkstra's algorithm and based on the, the length of these, uh, these streets. And of course, if we would like to do more advanced analytics, we would maybe calculate, for example, the uh, kind of drive through times of these things. So we could use basically the information about the speed limits uh, and then information about the length of the segment to understand how long does it actually take for a car to travel through these segments. And then we could use that as a kind of weight attribute in our data. And all of that information is available uh, in in the data. So basically we have this max speed parameter that gives us the maximum legal speed limit. Uh, there is basically, um, this information is not always available for each edges. So if we would want to do this, uh, there is basically a bit of cleaning up and a bit of filling the data in a way that we, we would need to uh, basically use, for example, the uh, road class or the road type to estimate the speed limit information for such roads that are not, uh, that do not have this max speed information. Um, yeah, so there are a few steps that are needed uh, for doing, mm -hmm. doing those things. Um, but basically now you, you got uh, basic understanding of, of how we can actually do uh, network shortest path analysis using kind of the network X package. Uh, I will still show you one thing like now we were able to plot this thing, but how can we actually fetch the data? So getting the actual uh, information out, out from the the, the graph and the root. So how do we actually create the line string from, from the root that we got? So let's first get the nodes along the shortest path. So let's create a variable called root nodes. And in a similar manner as we saw when taking the rows from the data based on the origin and the destination. So we can just say that 
from this node, the projected node geodata frame, uh, take all those uh, all those rows that belong to the shortest path in this case. And like, let's actually see what we have. So what we do in here is that now we have all the information uh, on those of those nodes that were part of our shortest path uh, result in this case. And now we can use this information to actually build the actual route uh, that was taken uh, by or was the optimal route. And we can do that by using the things from the really first week of this old GIS uh, course, so using the Shapely functionalities to do that. So from Shapely dot geometry import line string. So we can just create a geometry for the shortest path by <coughs> Passing, so let's create a variable called root line equals to line string. And then what we pass as an input in here is that we want to have a list of the uh, geometries as an input. So from this root node, which is the geodata frame in here, we can see that we have the geometry column in here. Uh, having the point objects. So we just fetch these uh, values from this column and pass it in to this line string object in here. So list root, root nodes dot geometry dot values. This is the trick that we want to do to actually get a visible geometry out of out of the shortest path. So not that tricky. Uh, there are a few, few steps that we need to do uh, and this is this is how we can how we can do that. And then of course what we if we would like to save this as a shape file we need to create a geodata frame out of this one. So as a last step let's create a geodata frame. So root geom equals to GBD geodata frame. And what we pass in is basically this root line, which is inside two square brackets in here. So the first squares is the rows and the second one is the kind of the columns in this ge geodata frame. So that's the reason why we have two of them. Uh, the geometry will be read from geometry column. Uh, the CRS will be uh, the same as with this edges.proy.crs. Uh, and then because this is just a geometry, so we need to actually specify that the columns in this geodata frame should be having a name called geometry so that we actually get this thing working in here. So now let's see what we have after this one. So now we have a geodata frame with the geometry column and basically we could already plot this thing uh, like this and now we can save that as a file. Uh, of course, it might be good to add a list of OSM IDs, for example, associated with this one. So let's still do that. So add a list of OSM IDs. So unique IDs for each of those nodes uh, that are associated with the root. So we say that root geom equals, oh, sorry, root geom dot lock. And the first 
uh, kind of row in the data. Let's say that we create a column called OSM IDs equals to string list root nodes OSM ID dot values. I will soon explain you what this does. I will also calculate the root length. So root geom length in meters equals to root geom dot length. And then we have data frame. So now I did this now quickly but now what we have here is that we have the geodata frame with a couple of information. So we have the OSM IDs uh, associated with the with the root. So these are all the all the nodes that were visited on the shortest path and we need to convert that to string so if we would like to export this now into uh, a shapefile, so shapefile doesn't uh, kind of accept uh, data types such as lists. So we need to first um, first convert that into string so that we can actually save that into shapefile. And the length of the root is, it seems that this seems to be 952 meters. Uh, was the total length of, of our optimal route. So this is this is kind of the uh, things how we can do simple network analysis using using Python. There is also more kind of information. Uh, well, not that much, but basically a few steps how to plot the plot the things with buildings and so on so that we can get this kind of nice nice image out of it but let's save some time and skip that thing okay but that was everything for uh, this week sorry I needed to hurry a bit because I need to leave to the next event um, but is there some questions about this thing the exercise will be updated uh, tomorrow. Uh, we can take a look quickly about what it was last year because it will be most probably quite similar uh, exercise. It's actually exercise seven because last year we had this as a last item. Um, yes. So there was some, there is some problem one with kind of just exploring how you can uh, get data from OpenStreetMap using the OSMNX package and the problem two is to kind of calculate the shortest path based on certain list, list of origins and destinations and that's, that's the idea of the exercise six that we will do but uh, we will update this tomorrow. Uh, so that you can start working on it. Uh, then indeed uh, I sent you emails but that wasn't about that but we were actually discussing on Slack um, that d d d where was it actually maybe the, yeah so Vuokko uh, updated a comment in, in Slack about the schedules. So in the, this Thursday, as there is the Independence Day, so we won't have a practical session. Uh, but basically next week we have the practical session on on Thursday as, as, as normal. Next week we will have the last uh, lesson, which will be about uh, QGIS and using Python in that. Uh, there won't be any exercise next week. So basically now the exercise for, for this week, you will have time until the Sunday 16th. So the end of next week to, to actually 
do that thing or was it even further but anyway you you will have enough time to actually work work on the exercise uh, and next monday we will also publish the uh, final assignment